Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Live Today, Digital Edition, and I'm here with Sergeant Tim Lee. Are you still a sergeant? Is that the right? Well, once a Marine, always a Marine. I, I know you're always so, a Marine. I retired a sergeant. You retired a sergeant. I'm still a sergeant. Okay, yes, okay, because I know how the, those, yep. yeah, I want to get yep. those right. Yep. Yep. So we're going to talk about your book, Born on the 5th of July. And I like that because uh, a lot of us, especially guys my age, will remember the movie, Tom Cruise movie, Born on the 4th of July. And uh, coming back from the Vietnam War, and you know the treatment was not always good for you guys, for the vets, uh, and it and it really spiraled downward for the subject of that film. You're a day later, literally born on the fifth of July. Born on the fifth of July, and and things things worked out a little better for you. It was a different. I always knew uh, people for years asked me if I was had written a book about my story and I kept telling them I haven't lived my story yet, you know, but <laughs> I've lived enough now that I finally felt like I could go ahead and write it. And uh, so, I, but I always knew the title of my book would be Born on the 5th of July uh, after the movie uh, Born on the 4th of July. It was also about a Marine and uh, uh, Ron uh, accidentally shot one of his own Marines in Vietnam and uh, and then he himself was shot and paralyzed and uh, in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Uh, but uh, that's basically where our stories kind of part. He became kind of angry and, and bitter and mad. And truth, uh, truth of the matter is, Randy, I was, I was glad to be alive. I wanted to be alive. I wanted to live. And um, so, so I, my, my story took this direction. I spent a long time in the hospital. He spent months and months in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, surgery after surgery and problem after problem. I had a couple of young doctors doing things to me they shouldn't have been doing, and uh, because of inexperience, mm. they, they came that close to uh, taking off my entire right hip, which the nurse told me that I would never be able to set up. I'd have to lay on my stomach or my back uh, the rest of my life. Mm. Well, I've never been bitter. I, my, anybody who has ever known me, I I live more life than. Most people do with two legs. I love living. I have fun. I laugh and enjoy. I go hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. But but when that nurse told me that, when the doctor told me they were going to do a hip disarticulation, I went to the bottom. I knew, you know, and so I know somewhat what he felt. But at the same time, I didn't want to get mad. I didn't want to get bitter. I felt like God had given me a second chance at life. What? What? Okay, is that the difference, God? It's the biggest difference of all. It was the fact that. Of course, I was raised in a preacher's home, but that doesn't settle things for you. You know, so God has a lot of children, but he doesn't have any grandchildren. And so I, uh, whenever I got saved, when I came to Christ at a young age, uh, I was excited. But then I got away from God and let things come between me and God. I got quite rebellious, but God never left me. You know, he said he never would, never leave us, but I left. I left him. I turned my back on him, but he never, ever turned his back on me. Yeah. A loving God. A lot of people don't realize it, but a loving father will let his son leave the house and go prodigal. Yeah. But he's always waiting on him to come back. Yeah. When did you come back in relation to your time in Vietnam? Well, when I joined the Marines, uh, I, I tell young people all the time, I was tired of living at home. I wanted to change. I was tired of being told what time to go to bed. And, <laughs> you uh, and, wrong yeah, place. so I joined, the, <laughs> I went out of the frying pan into the fire when I joined the Marines. Uh, and it was actually in boot camp that my life began to make a, t a change. I, I was a rebel. I was a, I was mad at the world and, and rebellious toward anything to do with authority. Mm. And it was in the Marines, I actually they sent me to a one day motivation, and and, uh, and and that one day motivation actually got me turned around in my thinking, not spiritually, but got me turned around in my thinking. And I decided from then on, I want to be a Marine. I was a gung-ho Marine after that. I graduated from boot camp, a meritorious promotion, went to ITR and in engineering school, another meritorious promotion. In Vietnam, I was getting ready to re-up. I was going to go to embassy school. I was going to make a career out of the Marine Corps. So I, did, I didn't get right spiritually in the Marines, but they had a lot to do with helping me get my life straightened out and turned around. But it wasn't until after I stepped on the mine that I really got things right with God. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I came back, I spent eight long months in a hospital in Philadelphia, and in, in that hospital, a lot of uh, contemplation about what had happened in my life, what I was taught growing up in a Christian home with my dad, especially my dad being a pastor, mm -hmm. and things that I would learn, you know, in Sunday school and, and, uh, and church. 
And so it wasn't until after I stepped on the mine that I really got things right with God. And then when I came back home, I met Connie, and she met, had a big impact in my life, but, and she was living for the Lord. But I, I really decided that I wanted to do something for God with my life. I did never think I would ever be a preacher. That was the last thing that I really wanted to be was a preacher. Uh, being those, raised. those make the best preachers sometimes. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> but still, again, I thought, you know, I thought about getting into politics, thought about doing a lot of other stuff. But then God began to deal with me about ministry, about preaching. I couldn't get enough of church all of a sudden. I, would, I'd go to, I wanted to go to church. I'd go to, I'd, these are the days when we had revivals. Uh, back your your dad was yeah. preaching those crusades back in those days and I was just a young preacher and, and I'd drive two or three hours to go to a revival crusade, yeah. you know, because I, I want it. And that was God. That was the Lord working mm -hmm. in my heart and in my life spiritually. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because, you know, you used to have to drive a couple hours to, to be in something like, now you can just go online. Yeah. Yeah. And and right, is that, I, I'm I would, I'm certain that that somebody is going to watch this interview that is where you were. In other words, God's kind of tugging on them. That's why they're searching through, looking for videos, and they stumble across this, and they, and they, they connect. Yeah, with, you're, what, you're right. What, God. what do you what do you say as someone who's walked that road, figuratively? Um, what do you say to that person who's well, hungry for God right now, not knowing what to do with their life? Yeah, you know, I, uh, there's a couple of things here that, uh, and I, I meet I meet a lot of people who become bitter and angry because something tragic has happened in their heart and their life. And I tell them, the worst thing you do is run from God. Worst thing you do is leave the church and get mad at God. And, and the best thing you do is run toward God. And, and so... If somebody is uh, watching us and they're feeling that tug, kind of like I did when I came back to Vietnam, I knew God had let me live. And, that, and you know, it may not be a landmine explosion for someone watching us right now and and, uh, and seeing what we're seeing. It, it may be that maybe they've lost a child or a grandchild or, may, or maybe there's a, something that's gone awry in their life. They lost a job or something. They're throwing up their hands in despair. Turn, turn to God, turn to the Lord and he'll help you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. It may be that God's wanting you to go through this trial in your life for a particular reason. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've talked to uh, thousands of Vietnam veterans over the years, been able to minister to them and help them. They listen to me when yeah. they would not listen to anybody else because they know that I paid a price, that I, uh, I gave something. Mm -hmm. And then these Iraq and Afghanistan vets have come back. I've talked to thousands of these young men and women that have been in Iraq and Afghanistan. And and I've been able to encourage them. So somebody's going through a trial or they're, maybe they're trying to figure out what's going on in their life, get their way back to God. They was once on fire for the Lord and excited about God, but now they've gotten away. Come home. God's waiting with arms wide open. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he wants you to come home, wants you to live for him, wants you to, your life to count for him. Mm -hmm. And then God will use you to speak to people and to minister to them that he might not use me or you to right. reach that particular person, but he will use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're a, uh, an example of the scripture that says God works all things together for good. Doesn't say all Romans things are good. Yes. All no. things are not no, good. No, no. The step on the plan mind isn't good. <laughs> right. There's nothing yeah. good about it, a lot yeah. of the stuff, stuff you went through, but he's taken that and he's, he, he works, works it for yeah. good. Absolutely. Because you, you've got, you know, you've, you, you have a full life. Your wife's sit over here offset watching this interview, right? Yeah. You, you Three you, children, you six awesome grandchildren. Children, grandchildren, yep. and yep. a ministry, a, in other words, a, a passion for, for God and for life and for sharing with others. Yep. He can do it. Absolutely. He can do it. You need a little more encouragement. Pick up Born on the 5th of July. It's available right now. And uh, you can see more of uh, Sergeant Tim Lee, hear more of his story on our broadcast program. That's available right now at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.